Hey, welcome, welcome back to the Caribou Data Science Channel on YouTube. This is a late Sunday night stream. I, 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 uh, I spent most of the afternoon watching football, including watching the, the Cincinnati Bengals defeat the the the, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, and of course their coach John Harbaugh, brother of uh, Jim Harbaugh, Michigan coach. Okay, so that's a little late. This is going to be a short session, maybe thirty minutes or so. I'm going, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, we're going to wrap up uh, module two one two one or two two one I guess it is of the of the data science uh, lab for uh, quant uh, world quant uh, university. I'll, I'll mention again if you're looking for some uh, an introduction to R and also including you know, not only R you know, but R R for data science including you know, modeling data training and stuff like that. I, I highly recommend this course. It really is a very good course. The instructors are very good. The exercises are also very good. So don't rely on my video to, to answer your questions. If you if you watch the videos, you can do the work, okay? Because I can do it, okay? So I'll be back with you folks in like 15 minutes to get the show started, all right? Mm.
Okie dokie. Let's see, where are we at right now? Uh, okay, so let's just see if we can do a brief, a brief recap of our story to date. This is, again is uh, uh, the, first, the first lesson of uh, Module 2. Module 2 has to do with, uh, at least to date, has to do with uh, trying to predict housing prices based on various metrics. Uh, we started something as simple as, I think it was size maybe, but you can see start up here. Uh, the first half of the, of the, of the uh, well, we, we loaded a few libraries as always, and it meant we uh, had a thing that to ignore certain criteria, and then we uh, got a, a grade on this first session here. And then we see over here, we spent most of this, most of this uh, module, this lesson, building this, uh, this function to read our data. Uh, so it reads a data file, uh, pulls row that includes uh, capital federal. Uh, says, so it's uh, from, the, from the place with parent names, string contains capital federal, given a, an abbreviation, abbreviation there. All right. Then we pulled out only the properties that had a, had a apartment type of properties. And finally, we pulled out uh, only the apartments that were less than $400,000. Then we calculated the, uh, the, uh, the 10th and 90th quartile, assigned it to the variable names low and high. Again, this is based on the surface area and square metrics. And then, and then, we, and then we came back and we assigned uh, we created a, a new variable, a new, a new feature called mask area, and that had contained low and high. And then we pulled that uh, low and high mask area from the uh, EF frame. Again, so we, we come down here, we load the library. Most of this is what we covered up here. Uh, a, few, a few plots along there. We created a scatter spot to show its price versus area, we did that. Create a uh, feature matrix named X train. Mm -hmm. So we, we did that down here someplace, here we go. Model baseline, uh, calculated the Y train mean, calculated some, calculated some uh, predictions based on the Y mean and, 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 and the length of the uh, Y train. So we have one one calculation for each for each uh, item of the Y train. Again, finally, we, we come down there, add a line to the plot that shows the relationship between the observation strain and the predictions. That comes down here to calculate the baseline mean F mean on a linear regression line, uh, fit your model to the regression line. So let's come back over here, take a look up here a little bit first of all, see where we left off. Okay. Our problem is back up here, you can see that our, our model isn't very good fit. So let me continue down to here, creating the baseline to check for mean absolute error. And we, we did so this, we did our first linear regression fit. Okay. Then we use a fit function here at the Y train. Uh, check is fitted model. Now we do the, the evaluation. All right. Then we did Y predict model, predict the predict function. Then we took a look at this here. We probably should come back up here again and think, well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I could have preserved those data frames, okay? Uh, y train model predict. Now, the mean absolute error training, mean absolute error training Y and, and PRED. And we do the, we, so then we read the second 
Let me, let me read these uh, Buenos Aires test features, features to test. Your, your, your model's mean absolute error is $32,000. Now we're gonna say communicate results. We're almost through here with, uh, with 2.1. Let's see, once your model is, is built and tested, it's time to share with the with, it with others. If you're if you're if you're presenting a simple linear model to a technical audience, they might appreciate the equation. An equation. When we're creating the, our baseline model, we represented it as a line. The equation for that line is usually written like this. Okay. Since data scientists often work with complicated linear models, they they, they prefer to write the model like this. Intercept. Apartment price, intercept, coefficient, surface area. Okay, now let's come down here and see exactly. Okay, so we have to come back up here again. Load all this. We built our model, we trained it, it's beating the baseline, it's all very exciting. So let's end this lesson by doing a little bit of explainability. How is it that our model is making the predictions that it's making? So in order to answer that question, just remember this visualization that we made, where we plotted price versus area, and then we have our baseline model here uh, as a line. Now let's move over to the whiteboard and we can see the same scatter plot. And what we have here is our data, price versus area. We have our baseline model and it doesn't really fit the data, but let's just create one out of, you know, let's just create another model. Let's say that the line looks a little bit like that. Beautiful. So this is a model that might perform a little bit better. Now the question I have for you guys is, is there a way to capture this line mathematically? Is there an equation we can use to write what this line is? Do you guys remember anything? You guys remember this? Does this ring any bells to anyone? Or can we think about price as a function of area? Good. And I can see probably some of you guys are already shouting at the computer screen. So you're absolutely right. The equation that a lot of people learned is something like this. It goes y equals mx plus b. mx plus b. All right. So y is price. x is area. Now, interesting things here. m M is the slope of the line. So how much, how much it goes up as it goes over or how much price increases as area increases. And then the other thing we're looking at here is B and B is the intercept. That is to say where this line crosses the Y axis. Beautiful. So you guys are absolutely right. That is the way to the equation to write that line. Now, one thing I want to do is I just want to make some changes to this equation because it's going to get a little bit messier as we create more and more complex models. So if we clean up the notation a little bit, it'll make things easier for us. I'm going to keep Y right where it is. And the first change that I'm going to make is I'm going to take B and I'm going to move it here to the front. I'm going to call it instead of B, I'm going to call it beta. So I'm going to call this beta and I'll call it beta zero, beta zero. So that's the first part of the equation. I'll keep the addition sign where it is. And then I'm going to take the M and I'm going to move it over here. So I'm going to make it M, but I'm also not going to use, I'm going to use the beta again and I'm going to call it beta one, beta one. Beautiful. And then I'm going to make this, this is still just going to be an X. Beautiful. All right. So you're going to see this equation a couple different times during this lesson, 
But just remember that this is the same equation that you learned in high school or college or wherever it was that you learned it, right? The way that we describe a line, mx plus b, or in this case, beta 0 plus beta 1 times x or whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that we are describing mathematically, we have an equation where I can input the area and then I get as output from that function, I get a prediction of the price. So this is the equation that represents our model and we want to know what these different beta coefficient values are. And so if I go back to my notebook, I have an idea. Let's go to the internet. So I'm going to open up my internets, go to the webs, and I'm going to type in scikit-learn linear regression. There we go. And I'm just going to go here to linear regression and I'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to scroll down past all these. Here we go. Beautiful. And there's this thing called attributes. Attributes. So every time I create a linear regression object, you know, I instantiate a model, there are a bunch of things that I get with it. And I can see here that I have intercept right here. And also as a preview of what we'll do in the next task, we have coefficients right here. Now notice that these attributes, they end with this little underscore. And what that means is, um, that scikit learns way of telling us that you can only access these attributes once you've trained your model. Because it's not going to have an, in your model's not going to have an intercept if it's never seen, uh, data, if it hasn't been fit to data. So I can see that there is this intercept attribute, and that's what I'm interested in getting from my model. So if I go here and I go into, well, actually I can do model and I can do model inter. And if I use my tab complete, it even gives me intercept underscore. And if I hit shift and enter, I can see this is my intercept. So I can see the intercept for our. <laughs> it is no more shameful than the truth.
but of course they did. What? Okay, here's the thing. My dad's listening to these hearings, and it's like, of course the Russians tried to influence the election. This is, this is the same way the Americans try to alter elections, say, in some place like Argentina or Guatemala or even Iran. To, to, to assume the question is, did, did the Russians succeed? I don't think so. I really don't. You know, if they, if they tried to influence Trump's election, then, then they, would, they would try to influence Obama's election. Okay, why wouldn't they? Okay, the model intercept. Leading. You know what? There's no more. Really? And what about? Intercept. Then a regression object has no attribute. What proof do you have that they did influence you? First of all, but of course they did. They tried to what you don't you know. They tried to influence everything. You know what? There's nothing unusual about that. I, well, first of all, I'd be shocked if they didn't try to. But you know what? This wasn't the first time. If this did, why did he choose Trump? Well, how? And I would argue they have they was simply because of Benghazi. She'd be she'd be. Okay, for some reason we ran into a problem there, so let's go back down and try to rerun everything again.
And what about the witch? You know what? There's... I would be shocked if they didn't try to. Why would they? Why would they not try to? So if they were, well, we we seem to have no trouble going into space with our enemies. What we, then what are we doing? Then what about the, Then what are we doing going into space with them? Why are we allowing them on the space station? He doesn't, doesn't deserve my respect. Why do you keep watching? Why do you waste your time watching? Huh? I don't get it. Did you look did you look for any evidence of possible collusion in Pluto? I'd be shocked if you didn't. Why why would they not try to somehow? We do we? Well sure. Hmm. Panama, for instance. There was no country of Panama. Well, I mean, yeah, Panama, the founding, and what's the history of Panama? There was no, but the trouble was the legal, you know, go, go, go and read about the history of Panama. There was no problem. There was no, what happened was, do you know the history of the country of Panama? The reason the country of Panama exists is, is for the Panama. No canal. Yeah, the, U, the U.S. paid for, you know, basically backed the revolution to, to declare a country called. Of course, we did. Where, where do you think? The, where do you think the country of Panama is? There's, there's no great mystery.
I don't know why you listen to that. Because they're, because, because they're all liars. They're politicians, which means they all are. Okay. Are you really... But the question is this. Is this the first time? You know what? That's probably not the... What about how much? I just, I'm not sure I'm actually going to remember what any of these, uh, Notes actually mean. Hope they'll be able to use the steps, uh, right? Okay, so there we go. The model of 11,433. Let's come down here. So I believe we already passed the the, the, the this section because of the one because of the one issue because of the one thing. Okay. Let's come down here now. Watch this. We have our intercept. Now let's get our coefficient. So if I scroll down to the next task and I zoom in here, we have the coefficient and I'll do model dot, and we saw in the documentation that coef underscore is the way to get the coefficient. And I'll hit shift and enter. And notice that I'm getting some sort of assertion error here. Uh, the first thing is printing, but then it's not passing the assertion. And the issue is, is that Notice that my coefficient is actually coming in a list. It's coming in the form of a list. And I actually don't want a list. I want just the first and only item in this list. So I'll use square brackets and put a zero in there. Beautiful. That's looking really nice. And then also, since we're doing this, let's also, since we rounded our um, intercept, let's also round our coefficient. There we go. Beautiful. So we know that for every square meter we add to an apartment, our model predicts an additional $2,253 in sale price. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so we have our coefficient, we have our intercept. Now let's put it together in an equation that we can show. Coefficient is Model dot C or an F underscore. And again, we want to do that, comma two. And remember, the problem was because this was originally coming out as a list, we want to convert it to a. We have our intercept. Now let's get our coefficient. So if I scroll down to the next task and I zoom in here, we have the coefficient and I'll do model dot. And we saw in the documentation that coef underscore is the way to get the coefficient. And I'll hit shift and enter. And notice that I'm getting some sort of assertion error here. Uh, the first thing is printing, but then it's not passing the assertion. And the issue is, is that Notice that my coefficient is actually coming in a list. It's coming in the form of a list. And I actually don't want a list. I want just the first and only item in this list. So I'll use square brackets and put a zero in there. Beautiful. That's looking really nice. 
And then also, since we're doing this, let's also, since we rounded our um, intercept, let's also round our coefficient. There we go. Beautiful. So we know that for every square meter we add to an apartment, our model predicts an additional $2,253 in sale price. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so we have our coefficient, we have our intercept. Now let's put it together in an equation that we can show our fellow data scientists when we're showing off our model. I think it's C O E F. We have our intercept, now let's get our coefficient. So if I scroll down to the next task and I zoom in here, we have the coefficient and I'll do model dot, and we saw in the documentation that coef underscore is the way to get the coefficient, and I'll hit shift and We've got our intercept, we've got our coefficient, now let's write an equation with it. So I'm just going to do print here. Let's see here, what is the best way to do this? I'm going to do print, and I'm going to use what's called an F string. And an F string allows us to print out letter uh, character values, like for example, apartment price. There we go, apartment price, but it also lets us insert variable names. So for example, if I do apartment price equals, and then I do intercept, I'm going to do intercept first, that's our beta zero. Notice that it appears here in our equation. And so now I just need to complete the equation. I'll do intercept plus coefficient. All right, and then I will multiply it by surface covered. Surface covered. Beautiful. And so here, this is the equation for our model. So this is our y. This is our beta 0. This is our beta 1. And then this is our x. Excellent.
X, excellent. Beautiful. All right, we have an equation. Let's see if we can visualize this. There's a difference between and succeeding. Really? Equations are very nice when you're talking with fellow data scientists and your model's relatively simple. But when you're dealing with stakeholders, they really don't want equations. You know, a picture is much better for communicating with a, a non-technical audience.
So let's see how we can make a visualization of our model that will help people understand how it's making the predictions that it's making. Yeah, now, here in the notebook, I have a little bit of code, starter code. And if I hit shift and enter, we have that same scatter plot that we've seen numerous times throughout this lesson. So what we can do here is let's add our, let's add our model. So yeah. what I can do is I'll do PLT plot. We're going to be plotting a line and the X values in this line are going to be X train. X train. Beautiful. And then the Y values for our model are going to be our model's predictions. So I can do model dot predict. I could also use the list of predictions I made up above, but let's just do this to kind of, you know, build that muscle memory. So we'll do model dot predict X train. So it's predictions for X train. Let's do another color. Let's make this color red. Uh, and then let's add a label. This label will be linear model, linear model. Beautiful. And if I hit shift and enter, we'll see here is our beautiful linear model.
and we can see that this fits the data a whole heck of a lot better than our baseline model. So it's no surprise that our mean absolute error was much better. And as you can see, this scatter plot is a great way to show people the relationship between the size. predict that's all I've had. This is probably one of those things that's embarrassingly simple. model predict that's where they're annoying isn't it how come this isn't working Okay, let's try getting rid of these, because it seems to think Am I forgetting something? Okay, so this may be one of the first things I've done that hasn't actually worked.
new post. Let's see. Well, I don't know what the problem with this. Like I, like I said in the notes, there there wasn't any uh, any uh, errors above. You know, I, I wonder if it's not a format area here someplace. Maybe it's kind of hard to say. Um, What's this about over here? Practice predicting price with location. Hmm. Prepare the data. We're moving on to a, oh, a different data path here now. Some more data. Frame print. Interesting. Okay.
and the vicious. The last of us is streaming. You know, I would say there's one thing that uh, one thing that uh, I don't know if these things, you know, if there's any type of predictive model trading, you know, it's a, what's it called, quantitative trading or whatever it is, it can't predict the downturn because, well, because it can't predict the future. We'll give, we'll give the, the good folks over at uh, Quant University uh, a chance to answer my question. Hopefully, there's a very, I'm, I'm sure there's a very simple answer. This is interesting. Pizza. I personally think the game was fixed. I just found it was very unusual to change the game plan. When I, when I get the manic episode, I start to wonder and have and be aimless. Yeah, and that was one of the things the officials thought they saw something they didn't see. The Super Bowl is the pinnacle of American sport. Over the course of a few hours, well, there was a time when, uh, when one, I think it was one of the Super Bowls, when lo and behold, 
Uh, Bobby, the power went off at a critical point lost. in the game, and the power came sure back on. The other team was losing. That went game on to was win. rigged. Most of the time, evidence is severely lacking in the. these scenarios and no notable people involved ever come forth. But there are a select few conspiracies revolving around the nation's entertainment behemoth that do have some serious backers. Why do these people think these games were rigged? How could they have been fixed? Should we even believe in these conspiracies or are they nothing more than a little controversy that adds to the lore of the league? This is the history behind those games and the accusations that come with them. <laughs> Before we arrive at our first allegation of collusion, it's vital that we first understand the history behind it. By 1960, the NFL had been around for four decades and had managed to trounce or absorb any potential rival football leagues. So when the American Football League kicked off in 1960, it was seen as just another league that would come and go. It appeared the NFL had a monopoly on professional football. The AFL mainly got cast off players who were misjudged and ready to prove that they were deserving of a pro career. Then the league started scouting small school players, predominantly black schools, which were largely skipped over by the NFL. And most importantly, the AFL landed a crucial TV deal with ABC and years later a generous deal from NBC. This in return gave AFL teams more money to sign players. Back then, it was a bidding war on college football's best prospects. So over the next few years, the AFL was able to steal more and more highly rated prospects from the NFL. One of the most notable players was Alabama star quarterback Joe Namath, who was drafted by the NFL's St. Louis Cardinals and the AFL's New York Jets. He ended up signing with the Jets for the most expensive contract ever given to a college player at that. Now there, there there is a conspiracy theory uh, uh, surrounding this this year's playoffs. As I'm sure you realize, you know, the, 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 you know it was tragic that although not fatal that the that the uh, Buffalo player uh, had a heart attack after after taking a hit to the chest. Well, the, when, when the, but yet when the it's the amazing thing about it when when he finally resumed the playoff game. It was basically uh, overtime conditions. The team to score for it first would win. Well, lo and behold, the Bills come out and they score on the on a, and, he, and, he, and he score on on the first play of the game, which was which was their kick return. Now that sounds that's a, that's a nice story, but the but the conspiracy says that the team they are playing hadn't given hadn't given up a a, a, a return for a touchdown in three years, and yet it happened during the playoff. Okay. Now, would the coaches have said, "Hey, let's let's get the Bills this game"? I don't think so. Would there been, could there have been an agreement among the players? You know, here's here's my point about this. You know, that'd, that'd be nice if they did, but you know what? Suppose these same players never made it to a playoff again. I mean, would you really want to give up maybe a once in a, in a career opportunity to play and to actually make the playoffs in order to, in order, in order to give the a, to get a feel good moment for the for the for the uh, for the Buffalo Bills? I don't know. That time, this was one of the biggest contributing factors that led to the point where player salaries were increasing so fast that the two leagues decided on a merger. 
because ultimately the owners wanted to keep the your chance. You keep her alive. Say her, you can say her. Hi, I'm Petra. And this is my channel, Petra Goes Outdoors. Today I want to show you my Tinder on a stick. And if you like, you can join me. But first, I have to... It was one of the worst day crashes in stock market history. Facebook's parent company, Meta, dropping more than 26% last week. That is more than $230 billion in market share value. The largest single day drop for a U.S. company ever. And financial challenges at Facebook as the company and its employees brace for a tough road ahead. After its parent company, Meta, reported its first ever revenue drop. Profits falling a staggering 36% from last year. In response, Meta is now planning to hit the brakes on... Well, yeah, I, I think it's a little too soon to uh, start singing the funeral dirges for uh, Facebook yet. It may, it may shrink, but it'll never go away. Hiring. Yeah, let me say this about this. I made a mistake here. I was wrong. I trusted this management team. That was ill-advised. You sure is extraordinary. And I apologize. Okay. So Facebook is going dark. And to show you how bad it is, Facebook has lost $232 billion in one day. And that's the largest one-day value drop in stock market history. But actually, Facebook holds the top two spots. Check out this clip from four years ago. The sell-off was staggering and unprecedented. Facebook losing $119 billion in market value today alone. The worst single day ever for a U.S. company after this profit warning from CEO Mark Zuckerberg. We're investing so much in security that it will significantly impact our profitability. Zuckerberg himself lost $15 billion in the sell-off. All right, so we can all get our heads around what's happening with Facebook. In early February of 2022, Facebook was worth about $900 billion. Now, nine months later, in November, it's worth about $270 billion. That's a loss of over $600 billion in value. Facebook losses from February 2022 to November 2022, which is roughly about $600 billion, that's more than the GDP of 88% of the country in the world. We're talking about more than Sweden, Finland, Poland, Nigeria, Israel. Now, it's so bad for Facebook, in one day, they lost more than the yearly GDP of countries like New Zealand and Costa Rica. So now that you know how bad the problem
And with, my, and with that, my dear friends, I'm going to say good night to you all. I'll be back at tomorrow evening, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to hopefully uh, fix the problem with that with that with that code there, or some some reason or other. And we'll, we'll move on to, to uh, what is it, uh, 20. Uh, zero two two. The, the, the second uh, uh, the second part of the of the second module. Okay.